Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to create really cool edges for your photos. <laughs> So this is actually going to be two tutorials in one. I'm going to show you how to take an object or a shape and turn that into a frame that we can use for our photos. And then I'm going to show you how to create a high impact uh, frame from scratch inside of Photoshop. So if we look here, we can see we've got this photo here of a gentleman. And then we've also got this parchment background. Now I grabbed these photos from Adobe Stock. It's a great place to experiment and play around with photos. Um, as you can see here, inside the library, inside of Photoshop, we can search Adobe Stock directly from there, grab photos, and then just drag them into Photoshop and start using them for free. So you can experiment and try out different things. And then if you find something that you like, then you can go ahead and you can license it and use it in your commercial work. Okay, so we've got this guy here. He's kind of a cool Doseki sort of looking guy. And uh, over here, we've got this background. So we're going to use this here as our frame to add texture and give it a vintage feel. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to isolate the background. So let's just grab our quick select tool right here inside of Photoshop. And then we're just going to go around the edge. You could also use a magic wand with contiguous turned off is another way of just kind of selecting the white around there. It doesn't have to be perfect. A rough selection is going to be good enough for what we're doing. And if you wanted, you could also take photos of your mobile phone and load those in. Use those as textures um, for frames and different things like that. Um, experiment, try out different things. So what we're going to do here is we want to isolate this background. So I'm going to create a mask, but I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key. And by doing that, as I click the mask button, it is going to mask out the background so it does an inverted mask. So there we go. We've got our shape. Now we want to take our man here and we want to drop him into that frame and make him part of that. So what we do is we just click and we're going to drag into the new tab. Don't release yet. Move. You'll see my cursor is black, meaning it's loaded right now. And I'm going to hold down the shift key to center it. Now I'm going to release. And there we go. There's our photo dropped in right on top of our frame. Now we want to make it fit inside of there. Now there's so many different ways we could do this with selections and different things like that, but I want maximum flexibility. I want to be able to resize this. I want to reposition it later. So the most effective way of doing this is to use a clipping group. So we're going to create a clipping group by simply going between these two and see how our finger is on that little line there. Nothing's happening. Hold down Alt on Windows and that'd be Option on Mac. You see that little triangle, one little triangle, little arrow thing appears, click on that line. And now that places it inside that shape. Now, the cool thing about that is if I click on here, I can move it around, see that? And it's going to fit within that shape. So it's constraining the transparency. Now I want to make this, this fella a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hit control T and that'd be command T on Mac for free transform. Now notice the handles are not showing. That's because it, the uh, image is so much bigger. To show that, hit Control or Command Zero, and it will shrink it down. And now you can see your adjustment handles. So I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'm going to drag this out. And the Shift key constrains the shape, and we're going to make it fit our frame. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to hit Control Zero to fill it. So it's looking kind of good, but none of that texture is showing through. Let's make that texture show through right now. We're going to change the blending mode to something like overlay. And here, if we go there, that gives us an almost like um, wet print kind of uh, archer kind of style, very early photography. So we could try some other ones uh, if we don't want to go quite that crazy, although that is kind of cool. But we can try things like um, multiply. It's going to give us a kind of a nice look and see how that texture is just kind of showing through there. Very nice. It's kind of, um, you see in the intro to Walking Dead, it's kind of a little bit like that style. And I'm just going to take the opacity down just to fade it down a little bit so we get a little bit more of that just kind of blending in. That's looking great. Let's throw a background on it, just a white background. And uh, we've got that kind of effect. Now, if we wanted, we could mix the different type of blending modes and different coloring things and do more to it. But as you can see there, you know, we've gone from a very kind of, uh, you know, cool picture, but not a lot of style to something that's a lot more stylistic here. And if you wanted to drop a drop shadow, just select that layer here and then choose drop shadow from our effects here. And then let's give it a little distance and soften that off a little bit and drop our opacity down. And you can see, you know, we can actually just click and drag there 
And we could do something like that to create that kind of cool effect. All right, let's do our second one. This time we're gonna create it from scratch in Photoshop. We're not gonna use any extra photos. We're gonna create our own edges right here. So we're gonna grab another photograph and I'm thinking a good photo to use here is one I found of these dog sleds. Double click and that opens it up, beautiful. And I wanna just kind of create a layer over the top. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna fill it with black. So you see we got a new layer there. I make sure that black, if I hit the D key, you'll see black is the foreground color. I wanna fill this with the foreground color. Now don't grab the brush and start painting. I've actually seen people do that. To fill with the foreground color, select the layer we want to apply it to. Hold down the Alt or the Option key on Mac, and that is for foreground, and then just hit the Delete or the Backslash key. And that will fill it with black. All right, cool. Now I want to resize this, so I'm going to hit Control T, and that'll give me those edges, and I'm going to hit the Option and Shift key, and that'll constrain it and do it from the center. Shift key constrains, Alt or Option does it from the center. So let's take it to about here, and I'm just gonna hit OK. So we wanna kind of create some kind of an effect around here. So I'm gonna blur this. I'm gonna choose the filter, and I'm gonna grab the blur here, and I'm gonna grab a Gaussian blur. And we wanna just kind of soften these edges. So we can go up here. That's looking good. Now, the trick to this effect really is just applying different types of filters to create different edges and different kind of textures around those edges that we can use for the photo edges. So, you know, we could look at different things here. We could choose filter distort is always a good place to go. And, you know, we could try things like ripple. And, you know, if we applied, you know, a, a pretty strong ripple, you could see how that gets that kind of effect. So it'll give us kind of a canvasy effect. And let me just hide the background so you can see that. You know, that's one way of doing it. Um, let me undo it here. We could also go to filter and let's go to a different option here. Why don't we go under the distort again? And this time we've got some really crazy things we could do like wave. And, uh, you know, if we look at the wave here, we can do pond ripples, but we can also do, you know, different things like this to create different weird edges with ridges and things like that. Click OK. And you see we get different shapes that way as well. All right, so I think you get the general idea. There's a lot of different things we can do. So let's just go back under the filter. This time we're gonna go back under the distort again. And I think I kind of liked some of the stuff that we were getting here with our ripples here. So let's grab our ripples. And I'm even gonna go maybe to large ripples and click okay. And that's got a kind of a cool effect. So what I wanna do now is just simply do the same thing we did before. Let's just unlock our layer, drag it to the top, and now we just want to put it inside. So we're going to do our clipping group, Alt or Option. And then it puts it against that edge. So let's just drop a, a different color background. Maybe we'll do a dark gray this time. So you can get an idea of how this is working. So I'm just going to make sure the background is selected there. Alt or Option and Backspace. And you can see that we've got this cool kind of effect around there. So there's a lot of different things you could do. And I recommend that you experiment with the different filters and see what kind of edges you can get. And by the way, when you create these edges, you can save them to your library so you can reuse them. To do this, it's really quite easy. All we want to do is just go to the layer that has that shape on it, and then we just go to our library and then just hit the little plus key and hit add, and it's just gonna add that right in there. So that means later on, you know, if we're working with a different photograph, we can drag that in at any time and use these, uh, these backgrounds. Let me unlock that, just throw it on top so you get the general idea, and boom. And one of the things I recommend is, you know, going in there, trying out a bunch of edges, create your own little library of edges. And one of the things I would recommend doing is using Adobe Stock to find some of these papers and different shapes to save you a lot of time. And to get you started, I've got 10 free images in the link underneath for you to go into Adobe Stock and grab some of those different uh, textures and different shapes of parchment papers and different things like that and start to create your own photo edge library. Um, also, if you're creating photos and you wanna submit them to Adobe Stock where millions of people can see them and you can sell them, go ahead and click on that link underneath to become a contributor. So anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button into dust. Uh, drop a comment, I'd love to hear what is your favorite edge and uh, what did you learn from this tutorial? And what would you like to see in the next tutorial? Please drop that 
in the comment underneath. And by the way, if you love Photoshop tutorials, I do a new tutorial at least once a week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and that little bell notification so you know whenever I upload a new tutorial or I do a new live stream. So anyway, guys, thanks for checking it out. And until next week, I'll see you at the cafe.